Hey, everybody, welcome back. It is Beyond the Saga. I am David Cottingham here with Hannah Burr. How are you, Hannah? And I am well. And how are you? <laughs> I am well. <laughs> la, 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 la. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've done some Beyond the Sagas here. Yes. Um, it's, I don't even know. Have we done one in the new year yet? I don't think we have. I don't think we, we have either. So we are back in uh, better than ever and, and going to start cranking out some of these. we got some good stories that we're going to touch on uh, throughout the year, obviously. Uh, but of course, you know, we're on Inside the Force as well. Uh, right now, mainly talking about the Bad Batch as that series rolls out. The Mandalorian's about a month away. Getting pumped about that? Okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on Beyond the Saga, you know, we're ex- we're talking about and exploring all those stories outside of the Skywalker Saga, and there are some incredible ones out there, some incredible ones coming up, especially the new uh, video game mm-hmm. coming out, Jedi Survivor. Mm-hmm. That, did you see that it actually just got pushed back, unfortunately? <laughs> yeah. So not getting it till the end of April, but it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna play the hell out of that, and then we're gonna talk about it. Love it. But right now on this episode, uh, we want to go back uh, and talk about a book that came out a few years ago, but uh, it's fresh on Hannah's mind because she just finished it a few weeks ago. Uh, I, I, I did this. Uh, I listened to this book a couple years ago. Very, very good. And what we're talking about is the book called Rebel Rising. And it is uh, actually, uh, I forgot I usually grab these books, don't I? Whenever I. Uh, <laughs> it's within have, arm's reach. I have all these books, right? So here it is Rebel Rising uh, by Beth Re- Revis. Revis? Revis? I don't think I've ever heard her name, Revis. Um, if you are familiar with her name, she just came out with the princess and the scoundrel. Um, but this was her first book, I believe in the new Canon for star Wars. And as you can see on the cover, it's all about Jen or so. So, um, the book came out May 2nd, 2017, meaning that it came out, right after Rogue One had released. So Rogue One came out December of 2016. So five months later, this book came out. And I believe the significance of this book is that it fills in the gap between when you saw young Jin in the movie up until, uh, you know, when she's older and, and freed on Wobani. So that's what this does. It fills it in. It, it it talks about you know we we learn more about the partisans. We learn more about Saul. Um, it just it, it was pretty much a complete book as far as Jin's storyline goes. So overall, Hannah, um, what did you think and feel about this book? Well, when I first uh, was going to read it, I I did not expect to thoroughly enjoy it as much as I did. Hmm. I deeply deeply wish that this book was part of rogue one because it mm. would have for me because my biggest complaint about rogue one is that Jin is a very passive character in rogue one she's not right. a very active protagonist everything happens to her she doesn't really cause things to happen in this book it is the complete opposite Her choices have consequences. And I actually care about her. (laughs) Um, We get to see how how Saw Gerrera grew her up in fighting for something and then she loses it. And she loses and she gives up on exactly what hope is. And it's it's a book that follows her life. As as you said, it follows her life. We see her with Saw Gerrera. We see her almost find family again. We Mm -hmm. see her struggle to fight on her own. We see her, somebody who absolutely loathes the empire to end up working with them in a weird way. 
I'm not right. going to give away too much. I'll keep it yeah. that big. But just that arc alone is way more interesting than what we see in Rogue One. So I absolutely loved the book. I would say it is one of my favorites. Um, and mm. I just, I wish there was a lot more of this in Rogue One. Interesting. Interesting. What about you? What were your thoughts on this? Book? Yeah. You know, I, you know, this, this was, uh, like I said, this was back in 2017. I remember, I think I was, I listened to it pretty close to right after it came out and it was still fresh in my mind, uh, Rogue One, because, you know, Last Jedi hadn't come out yet. So it was, it, it, it was, in Rogue One was, you know, I love Rogue One. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so, and, and I, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong about this, because uh, I get my, my timelines messed up these days, but I believe that uh, Battlefront 2, which was um, a game, video game first, but then they made a book. They wrote a book called Inferno Squad. Mm -hmm. um, and that book, I believe, came out before this. Okay. And that dove into also uh, the Partisans. Okay. But it was after... It was after Rogue One, right? So it was just it was Saul's partisans still, but they were still out there, kind of you know inflicting all their stuff into them. Because what happens is, Iden Versio, who is the lead of Inferno Squad, kind of goes undercover as a partisan or whatever, and you kind of learn more about the partisans um, post Saul Guerrero. Hmm. So when this came out, you're getting the partisans, you know during Saul Guerrero and kind of his ideals and all that stuff. So, um, so I thought that was a very interesting, uh, take because, you know, we don't, we don't really ever get the sense of, um, I mean, we get a little bit of the sense of what Saul's people do. And at this, at this point in Rogue One, when we see them, um, they're, they're pretty much borderline terrorists, right? They're, they're literally yeah. to, just it doesn't matter they're not just targeting uh the empire like it doesn't matter who gets killed and i th i believe you know you just you see a lot and learn a lot more of that during this book so not only do you, i thought it was not only did i like it because of jim but i liked it because of all those reasons too so um so i, I did i did really enjoy it i think it was uh, it was a. It came out, I think, at the best time. You know, like I said, right when Rogue One was still fresh in everybody's minds. Um, so if you missed it and you moved on, and you know, we're, we're watching the movies, you might not um, think about going back. And this, and it, and it also is a. It's a young adult novel, not an adult novel, but you know. So, um, but it, you know, easy to read and great to listen to. Did you was, read it or listen to it? I listened to it. Um, yeah. I would say, though, this is actually a great time to pick it back up, especially if you've watched Andor. Uh, agreed. No. Because I And that's I why started, I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I started this book right after Andor. So for me, it was a lot of, oh, OK, and seeing those parallels between the two. Yeah, agreed. And a little bit with, you know, with Bad Batch, you know, it's we're kind of in that time period where the Empire's new. And, you know, I think I believe maybe i mean maybe sometime in the bad batch we might kind of get into the rebellion a little bit and some of these groups you know and i i mean we already saw saul in season one of the bad batch so i believe there's just a possibility he'll come back so so how so how important i mean you kind of touched on it a little bit but like how important was this story to tell for of jen like I wonder if you and I are gonna have different opinions of this because for me, this was crucial. Uh -huh. This was crucial for me to care about Jen. And it was also kind of refreshing to read a book about someone losing hope. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it was. it's different. It's different than we're used to in Star Wars. So, so to me, it filled in so many blanks. It made me care about Jen a lot more and to realize how much is at stake really for her personally. Right. That book 
I feel like for people like me who don't like Rogue One, if you read the book, you then appreciate Rogue One more. So I think it's crucial. But I have a feeling you might think differently. No, I don't. I, I think so. You're so you. So it has changed the view, your views of Rogue One. It's helped me understand her a bit more. Rogue One is still still confuses me a bit with regards to what her motives are. But it helped explain them a bit more. Yeah. I, I won't say how because that that's a huge spoiler in the book, but it does explain a little bit more of her psyche. Yeah. I, I think I no, I actually think um I don't think it's uh, well for me. I I don't think it was essential to appreciate or like Rogue One. I don't think you. I don't think you need to read it to understand um, what's happening in Rogue One. I agree with you in a sense that I I, I do think that in Rogue One it would have helped to show maybe something of maybe one of these scenes or one of these scenarios in her past in her relationship with Saul to kind of understand where she's coming from and where in that, you know, because when we see her approach Saul, I mean, we don't, we don't really know the history in the movie, right? If you're just watching the movie, you don't really know. All you know is that he came and found her when she was eight Mm-hmm. And uh, you can kind of deduce that he trained her, right? But was he just another partisan, or was she actually like a daughter figure to her, to him, right? Because it seemed in the f- beginning of the movie, the way he says "come child," you know, it's like he's almost like becoming her father. But and you learn you learn a little bit about this in this book. I feel like like y- y- there is a relationship there. But it's more of a protective relationship, not necessarily a father-daughter relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, father-daughter is protective, but I mean, like, it's more of like a guardian than than a father, right? So, It's like an uh, uncle taking care of the kids that his... Lost their parents or something like that, right? So, so I I do just, I do feel like that... um, I do feel like that if if something like that was in Rogue One, I think, like you said, I think that would have made people care about her more, understand her a little bit more. Um, and I, I can see that. I think, I think, I think, I think this, I think this is. Uh, I mean, anytime. I mean, I almost feel like anytime you can get someone's backstory, especially the full backstory. It's uh, it's nothing but beneficial uh, to that person and to that story, but um, but then again, if it's not any good, I don't, <laughs> you know, I mean, this this book could have been bad, and you've been like, wow, I I really don't like this character anymore. Um, but I think it was really well written. I think it was good to to understand where what she's where she's come coming from and what she went through. And of course, we 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 you can you can learn about this the part that she mentions in Rogue One about leaving her behind, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I think it was I think it was pretty pretty important to Jin. I, I think the other scene that you would need to add though to help help understand that she's lost all hope and she really doesn't care. She only cares about herself, uh-huh. and that shifts in the movie. I think you need to see, and you can really make it a concise scene, but I think you need to see her working with the Empire. And that's all I'll say so I don't spoil it, but I think you need to show some of that. Yeah, yeah. To show that even though she went from a partisan, a member of the partisans, to you know working for whomever, it just shows right. her loss of hope. Right, right. Hmm. Just, just a little, just a little something. Yeah, you know? sure. No. Um. What, what is has this? Did this story do anything for you as regards to the character of Saul? 
I loved learning more about Saul. Like, I, I always felt like he was somebody who lost someone. And mm. this was, and him just kind of lashing out the way he does is very much of a revenge thing versus a search for justice thing. And well, technically, I, he did lose somebody. Yeah, right? he did. Yeah. He, he did lose somebody. Like, that's exactly what it was. And so. Yes. I think it just, it makes you feel sorry for him mm -hmm. to see him go through, to, to be like, how sad of a life is it to be paranoid all the time? Or just constantly fighting. I mean, that too. I mean, that your body's going to give out at some point. And his did. Yeah. I mean, it did. So I, yeah. I just think this, it, it helped us get a closer look into Saul. Not that we didn't care about Saul, but we kind of got Saul. Just by from what other people saying, we we kind of were like, okay, so this is the type of guy he is. But when you read the book, you're like, wow, that's somebody who just straight up lives in anger and fear. If he was force sensitive, yeah, right, yeah, we'd have another Sith on our hands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think he dark side. Yeah, I think um, you know it, it's funny because uh, I, I I can't think of another character right now that 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 we're we've gotten in so many different mediums right now and shows mm. but we we have not gotten it linear that is so true we even saw him in um Jedi Fallen Order yes we and saw him all over the place that's what i'm saying he's popped up i mean obviously he started out in clone wars mm -hmm. then he was in rebels then he was in rogue one then he was in Jedi Fallen Order. Then he was in this book. Then he was in, now he's been in the Bad Batch. So he's like, Andor. We're, we're, Andor, yes. So, you know, it's like we're we're getting him in all these different timelines. And we, I mean, technically we haven't gotten the full story of Saul, right? Um, and we haven't gotten anything, obviously, um, beyond uh the clone wars like earlier when he's probably living happily on onderon mm -hmm. so all we because all we know of saul is the guy that lost and the guy that is, been, is just straight up fighting the rest of his life um so it, it's a it's a it's a different type of character i think you know it's somebody that's like you said is, is it's he's not a dark side person but he has all this hate and you can even see it with like that conversation with Luthen and Andor. Like oh, even yeah. though he's somewhat calm, like he's paranoid. He's paranoid. Like everybody's after him. You know, uh, he's such an interesting character. And, and and man, I mean, Forrest Whitaker's playing him. I mean, you know, how, how much better you can get than that? You know, um, but but this book really, if you didn't have this book and just had these other things, you really would just see pieces of him every once in a while. I think this is, I almost feel like, I, I, it can be, I can be convinced either way, but I almost feel like this tells more, this feels more of the character of Saul than it does the character of Jin. Is that, eh, I, don't know if I, I don't know if that's too far. I think that might be a little bit too far. I think yeah, it helps maybe. definitely set Saw up, but I would agree that, and I think it's fair to say this, this is the most we've seen Saw in any medium. Sure. Absolutely. Because, I mean, he takes up like, what, a third of the book or something oh, like yeah. that? I mean, yeah. it's a good chunk of it. Yeah. So I, I think... Mm -hmm. I think this is a Saw and Jin story, and then it becomes a Jin story. Yeah, uh, agreed. Yeah, uh, definitely the back half of it's all gin. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it really kind of, you know, it, it really explains a lot with him and what he's doing. And, you know, you see a little bit of, you, you, you understand a little bit of the transition from just being a freedom fighter to basically a, a terrorist in a sense. And that's why, you know, you him and Mothma don't see eye to eye anymore at, at, by the mm -hmm. time you get to, you know, rebels and rogue one and stuff like that. So, um, okay. So, 
overall impact though like how so i know we kind of touched on it a little bit but like does you know how much of this story and gin impact the other mediums of the saga that we've experienced it's not just rogue one but even like rebels and clone wars and stuff I think it's huge because in every other Star Wars story we see, the protagonist is always like, I'm going to hold on to hope. There will be hope. There will be hope. This is the first time we see someone start off with hope (laughs) and loses it completely by the end of the book. Right. Yeah. And that's not really a spoiler because we see her hopeless at the beginning of Rogue One, which is where the end of this, the, the end of this book literally picks up. Or crosses over a little bit of Rogue One. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I just think that's that's enough to say that it's impactful because what about everybody who did lose hope? Right. What about the people who are like, well, why am I like why am I even doing this? What's the point? Mm-hmm. So Besides what I've said before, I think that's another reason why it's impactful for the entire Star Wars saga. I There might be another story out there where we see someone lose hope, but this is the first one I've come across. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think it's, you know, whenever you whenever you cover a long period of time in a book like this, I think it has it's very impactful. You know, it, it'd be one thing if we just you know, dropped in on Jin when she was like 14 and 15 and that was it. But, you know, this spans the gap of from when she was eight and taken by Saul up until literally she's on Wobani at the prison in Rogue One. So uh, something like that is always going to be, I feel like, very impactful, you know, Um, because, again, it just it, it. you see the full, I mean, now we almost technically, we have the full character journey of Jin Erso, you know? We um, do. And we have a lot of the gap of Saul's life during this time. So um, I, I, it's, I think it's, I think it's one of the must reads if you can, if you can get out there and get it and read it. And, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's very good. And it's well written too, you know. It's not oh, just yeah. a good story; it's well written. So, so what's the what's your rating? I give it a four out of five. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go four and a half actually. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Not quite five, not quite. But I think it's that's big. It's pretty high up there. I I I, I really enjoyed it. Um. I remember when I was listening to it, I just couldn't stop listening to it. I was, I was, I was sucked in. So really, really good. All right. Good. That was good. Good talk. Yeah, I think so. Good talk. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> been a while. So we are going to continue, of course, uh, check us out at inside the and, uh, we're on YouTube. That's where you're going to find beyond the saga and all our other shows. Uh, but we're on the podcast feeds on Inside the Forest where Hannah and I weekly touch down and, um, uh, uh, you know, break out all the news and analyze all the stuff in the, that's out there, especially the shows right now that's going on. The Bad Batch is on Disney Plus right now every Wednesday. Um, are you caught up on that right now? Yes, I am caught up. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, check us out on Inside the Forest. But come back here on YouTube for more Beyond the Sagas. Thank you, Hannah, as always. Thank you, Dave. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. May the Force be with you.